shit If he did it before, he can do it again So I trust him what comes next Cause my hindsight says I can count on this My God is in the sky We can do it before, we can do it again So I trust him with what comes next But my heart I know is no end for me My hindsight says I can trust him God, we thank you for your faithfulness tonight. God, we remind ourselves of all that you've done for us. God, we thank you that your presence is here wherever we're meeting. God, it's available to us. God, we set our focus on you tonight. God, we declare that you are in control. We put our trust in you. Come on, let's sing this together from heaven you can hear. I know you draw near as I worship I'm held within your love The wind and waves will come But I will stay here I lift my hands to heaven Sing through valleys. Through valleys, I will trust your spirit.
Impact, we're in week six of Impact Online. And do you know what? We miss you, but it is what it is. And we are in week dose of Youth Revival. Crushed it. Crushed it. Looking for some air nuggets. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was just so off dreaming about sports, man. We'd be right in the middle of the NBA playoffs, church Olympics broke. coming up, church softball, but all of that, <laughs> it's, it's so crazy. Cool. So, but hey, tonight is gonna be awesome. Yes. There may not be any sports to watch, but that's okay because church is happening right now. Like you said, yeah. week two, youth revival, gonna yes. be great. So you gotta make sure you have your snacks, your comfy clothes, your notes, and your Bible because Pastor Nate's bringing a word. You don't wanna miss it. It's gonna be great. Yes, and don't forget that we're still doing city groups. All right, so just go to theassembly.org slash youth stuff and get connected. It is so, 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 worth it. Yep, I kind of like that. So, week two, youth revival, here we go. Three, two, Let's one, do it. boom, hit it. Please, allow me to show you something. This is the question that every one of you today are going to have to answer. Who is Jesus? I believe that the evidence is overwhelming that he is who he claims to be. The son of the living God. But I cannot prove it scientifically. But I can prove it by the lives that he transforms every day. Let's go. Welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. My name is Pastor Nate. Wherever you're watching, whether it's church online or YouTube, I want to say thank you for making us a part of your night. Hopefully you've had a great, great day. But hey, if you're new to Impact, if you could do us a favor, um, introduce yourself in the comments. There'll be a connect card at the end of service. Um, we want to get to know you better. We may even send you a gift. I don't know. You're at home probably bored. We might send you a gift just to say thanks for making us a part of your night. Like quarantine has changed a lot of things and we're feeling that, you know, this is, I don't even know what day we're on in quarantine right now, but the mission and the message of the gospel has not changed and we need your help. You know, this is a perfect opportunity to invite your friend, to invite your parents, to invite your grandma, your aunt, cousins, whoever, to experience life change that is found in Jesus. So send them that link, show them the YouTube channel, My Impact, and tell them, hey, this is the perfect time for you to hear the message and the hope of Jesus. Well, I want to tell a story before we get into the night, before we do anything. And it's kind of an embarrassing story. It's one of, it's not like super embarrassing where it's like, seriously, why are you telling that? You just look super silly and stupid. But last summer, I got a, a, some mail and I get mail all the time. That wasn't the, the like exciting thing. But a car dealership had just sent me a piece of mail and I got a little excited at first. I was like, this, is, this isn't this is nothing. And I set it to the side because I was bored and I came back to it later. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scratch this off. I'm gonna see if I win because it was so convincing. You know, maybe you've got those in the mail, your mom or dad, or maybe even you when you turn 16. And it was like, hey, if you win three of these cars in a row, you could win $75,000 or a brand new car, your choice from our parking lot, or a gift card. And I was like, hmm, I'll take my chances. What else am I gonna do? This is pre-quarantine, I was home, nothing really to watch on Netflix, Disney Plus, Lindsay was out running grocery errands um, before he had to wear a mask and gloves and hand and sanitizer. And so I was like, I'm gonna go grab a penny. I'm gonna scratch this thing off. I'm gonna see if I just won our family $75,000 or a brand new car. I scratched one off, it's the, it's, it's the car that you're supposed to have. I scratched the second one off, it's the car that you're supposed to have. At this point, I'm, there's some anxiety setting in, I'm getting a little excited and I'm like, okay, this is, this is almost too good to be true. Is this real? God, are you, is, this, is this a joke? Are you testing me? Because I need a vehicle right now, but would I rather have $75,000? I couldn't decide, maybe you know. Let me know what you would pick in the comments. So I get to the third one. I scratch it just a little bit because I was nervous and it, it's the color of the car and then I get it completely off and it's the exact car I needed. I'm, I'm freaking out, I get excited. 
And then I read like the fine print. It's almost like the movie Santa Claus. Do you remember that Uh, with Tim Allen where it's like you read the fine print on the business card and they bring in magnifying glass, magnifying glass, magnifying glass. And there it is. Um, What all he needed to know, all the information he needed was right there. He just had to look closer. And so I was like, okay, this is just a joke. This is a scam. Um, But I decided to be a little bit mean. Um, And when Lindsay got home, I was like, babe, 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 you're not gonna believe what just happened. Because at this time I didn't have a car. I had just sold my car. And if you remember like one of my first messages at Impact, I was driving in a car that some family members had let us borrow. And the first couple of times I got into that vehicle, it smelled just complete nasty. It, it, was, it was like there was a dumpster. It would just, your hands would stick to the steering wheel. It was gross. I appreciate the car, but it, I'm pretty sure my clothes are still coming through that smell. Uh, but I was like, I need a car. We need $75,000. I'm going to mess with Lindsay. So she comes home from Target and I show her this. And I was like, so you're not going to believe what happened. We got this in the mail. Maybe they sent it because we're new to Oklahoma and we have this new house. I don't know, but we just won. And she freaks out. She lost it. She's like, babe, babe. That was my best impression of Lindsay. And it was terrible. I'm sorry, Lindsay. I love you. Um, But she lost it. And what I didn't process in the moment was I'm probably going to have to follow through with this. And so the next day, it's like, you need to show up at this time. And so Lindsay's like, babe, it's Saturday. It's Saturday. This is our day. We get to go collect our money, our money or our car, whatever, you know, whatever God provides, whatever he's willing, I'm okay with that. And I had kind of, because of her excitement and enthusiasm, I had kind of started believing it, even though there was always those doubts deep down inside. And I get in my car and like I anticipated and figured that I didn't process in the moment, Lindsay and the kids weren't with me. It was just me. So I drive, took me about 20 minutes to get to this dealership. And I'm like praying the entire time. I'm like, God, please let this be real. If it's not, please don't let me die. Please don't let it be a shady dealership where it's not even a dealership and they just take my, my nasty, stinky, smelly car and they stab me and that's it. I just don't want that to happen. I get to the dealership, it's legit. I walk inside, there's not a lot of cars. So excitement's starting to build up. Obviously there's a lot of cars, it's a dealership, but there's not a lot of like Oklahoma tag cars that are actually people's. And so I'm like, I might've actually just won $75,000 or a brand new car. I still at that time couldn't figure out what I wanted. I walk inside, turn around a corner and the building's full of people just like me. You might as well have written sucker on their forehead because it was a scam. I sit down and I had to wait for like an hour and they talk through this long list of things. They're like, well, are you in the, are, are you looking, are you in the market for a car, sir? I'm like, yeah, I don't have one right now. I'm, I'm driving a loaner, um, but I just can't figure out what I want. And then they go through all this list. Like, what's your budget? What are you looking for? I was like, well, man, I'm really here because this flyer says that I won. I mean, it's everything. And so I kind of have feelings that it's too good to be true, but I'm not sure. And then finally he tells me, he's like, there's your prize wheel, go spin it. And I spin the prize wheel and there was no $75,000 on the prize wheel. There was no brand new car on the prize wheel. It was a scam. All I got was a hundred dollar gift card. And even to use the gift card, I had to buy like a hundred dollars worth of stuff. It was a wasted hour and a half of my life. And I got all this excitement, all this, all this like, belief, 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 and let down. And I think for so many people, maybe you watching right now on your couch or in your bedroom, that's what your expectation or maybe your, your friend's experience has been with church. It's just too good to be true. God died for you and me. That's too good to be true, Pastor Nate. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've done. You don't know my story. I don't need to know your story. God does. And it's not a too good to be true story. God died for you. And we've been in this series, Youth Revival, and week one was all about how to experience a revival starts with listening and following God's word. Because no matter where you're at, in good seasons and bad seasons, God has a word for your life. God has revival for you. He has an awakening for you. We just have to stop, hit pause on everything in our world, which is easy to do right now, and say, speak, Lord, your servant's listening. Tonight in in part two of Youth Revival, it's all about to experience a revival, it starts with trusting God to move. 
That's the biggest thing. The, the, the Bible, God, if Jesus, it's not a too good to be true thing. It is a real, evident, life-giving moment and experience. And he has that for you. But the thing that stops us so many times is doubt. This unbelief of there's no possible way. So tonight, you've heard that story. Maybe it wasn't as embarrassing as I made it sound. But tonight I wanna lean into some scripture, some of God's truth on how to experience a revival. And James 1, five through eight says this. It says, but anyone who needs wisdom should ask God whose very nature is to give to everyone without a second thought. Without keeping score, wisdom will certainly be given to those who ask. And then verse six, listen to this. This is the important part. Whoever asks shouldn't hesitate. So don't hesitate, whether it's big or small, go to God. Um, they should ask in faith and believe that he's gonna answer without doubting. Maybe you can pause for a second and be like, well, how can you have faith in asking, but still have doubt? It's a good question. We're gonna talk about that more tonight. Whoever doubts is like the surf of the sea tossed and turned by the wind. I like to call this good and bad faith. You know, maybe it's kind of like, to, to give it a better picture, maybe it's like sometimes we listen to the voice of the angel and sometimes we listen to the voice of the enemy, the devil, whatever you wanna call it. And it's easy to have faith, it's easy to trust God and to not doubt when life is going good. When you got that job, when you got that stimulus check, when you got that promotion, when the girl you've been crushing on for a long time finally says, yes, I'll do a FaceTime date with you. Or better yet, you go on a car date and you sit beside each other at Chick-fil-A in your car, six feet apart, window halfway down. That way, if she coughs, you cough, you don't get anything. Maybe that's your good season. Maybe life's been going perfect. You're like, man, it's so easy to trust God. But what happens when, when life doesn't go the way you anticipated? And maybe that's a lot of us right now. This isn't the way you imagine your senior year. This isn't the way you imagine your mom, your, your, your grandma, your grandpa getting COVID and passing away. Can you trust God in good and bad moments in your life? Because there's gonna be good moments and there's gonna be bad moments. And there will be in between moments. But in order to have revival, it starts with trusting God. Don't doubt, don't lean onto your own understandings, lean into God and trust him. One of my favorite Disney movies of all time, I wanna know yours too, so drop those in the comments. But my favorite Disney movie of all time is Aladdin. No questions asked, Aladdin. Will Smith did a great job in the new one, but Robin Williams as the genie was incredible too. And there's a scene in Aladdin that reminds me so much of, of really this, this journey that we all should be on in faith. You know, Aladdin's up on the porch and the balcony, whatever you wanna call it, and Jasmine's like, just jump off the building and jump off the porch and he does. And all of a sudden he floats back up and she's like, whoa, whoa, how are you doing that? And it's his magic carpet. And then he goes up and he's like, I can show you the city. I can show you the world. Do you trust me? That's what God is asking you and I every single day. Do you trust me? Are you willing to take his hand and say, God, I'm gonna walk with you. I'm gonna trust you in the good moments and in the bad moments. There's not a single moment of doubt. And there's gonna be times when we doubt. And doubt's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, but don't let it be a dead end where you just stop in that moment. Live and walk in trust, knowing that God has you. The verse seven of John of James one um, says this, it says, people like that. So the people that doubt, they're being tossed around like a wave in the, in the ocean. People like that should never imagine that they will receive anything from the Lord. They are double-minded, unstable in all their ways. So people that doubt, people that aren't willing to say, God, I trust you. I'm gonna walk with you in the good and the bad. They're double-minded and don't expect to get much from God because you don't have the faith to believe that he can provide it. God says this, he says, double-minded, unstable in all their ways. God does not want you to be unstable. God did not design you and me and our faith to be unstable. And in order to not be unstable, we have to have the faith to say, God, I trust you. I trust you even though this might not be the story that I imagined ending my high school year that my, 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 my family getting sick or my mom and dad losing their job and we don't know what tomorrow holds, I trust you. My, 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 my people I care about getting sick, I trust you. Getting broke up with bad, I trust you. Whatever your story is, do you trust God to take a step 
and walk closer and experience the revival that he has. Hebrews 11, one is another great verse about having the faith to trust God. It says the, found, the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. So this, this trust in God, this faith is the very first foundation that we build and God builds everything else on our faith and our trust on the things we cannot see. That's the handle. When we have that foundation saying, I might not be able to see God and life might be going great, might be going bad, but I trust him with everything. Because faith is the ability to stand on God's promise even when you can't see his face, even when he's silent, even when he feels distant. Do you have the faith to know that he still is there, that he cares and that he's listening? John 20, 24 through 27. It's a story in scripture that is both awesome and tragic at the same time. And in this passage, Jesus, he's, he's done everything he said he would do. He's been, on the, he's been put on the cross, he's been put in the tomb and he's resurrected. And, and in this story, he appears to the disciples and a group of people and there's one disciple that misses him. And John 20, 24 through 27 says this, it says, one of the 12 went one of the 12 wasn't present when Jesus appeared to them. It was, Th- it was Thomas, whose nickname was the twin. So the disciples informed him, we have seen the Lord with our own eyes. And you gotta love scripture because if you look a little deeper, it's not like they say this one time. It's like they're amazed and almost bragging a little bit. Like maybe you've been there before. Somebody got to do something that you didn't get to do. Like maybe they got backstage passes or maybe they were that lucky person that got a car flyer to win $75,000 or a brand new car and they won and I didn't. And then they brag about it. They're like, we got to see Jesus. We got to see Jesus. You didn't. We got to see Jesus. He did everything he said he would do. And this is why this verse to me just kind of hurts so much is because Thomas says this, still unconvinced, Thomas replied. And know this, Thomas is a disciple. This is somebody that has seen Jesus do miracle after miracle after miracle. So he's seen all these things and he's heard Jesus say, this is what's going to happen. This is what's gonna happen. But he doesn't believe just because he didn't get to see him. So still unconvinced, Thomas replied, there's no way I'm going to believe this unless unless I personally see the wounds of the nails in his hands, touch them with my finger and put my hand in the, to the wound of his side where he was pierced. Have you ever been there before? Have you ever had a moment in your life, whether it's right now or a year ago, a couple of weeks ago, where you doubted God? You're, you're right where Thomas is at. There's no way, unless... There's no way that, that this is happening. I, I, I firmly doubt that. Of course, all of us have been there. And like I said before, doubt isn't a bad thing. Doubt can lead to growth. The question is, how do you respond when you have doubts? Because being honest and transparent with you, growing up in church, being a pastor's kid and as a pastor here before you right now, I have had moments in my life and in my faith where I have doubted. But in those moments, I didn't just leave them there. I went and I found answers to the things I was doubting. And my faith is stronger than it has ever been because a doubt led me to a resolution and that resolution led me to a foundation to build on. Doubt isn't a bad thing. It is if it's the end thing for you. I don't know what you're doubting. I don't know what it is that you're having a hard time with right now. Maybe you're doubting um, God because this isn't the story you wanted. This isn't what you anticipated, but I promise if you want to experience a revival, one, you need to know that God is there. You need to listen and follow, but two, you need to trust that this may not be what you or I wanted because this isn't what I wanted for you. I want to see you face to face. I want to be able to take you to Cane's. I want to be able to, to go to Starbucks with a group of you guys. I want to do all of these things and disciple and invest in your life. But God has something better planned. And there's a purpose for all this. Do you trust God? Because if you want to experience a revival in your life and in my life, the second way to do that is to trust him. The, there's, the verse goes on in John 20, 26 and 29. It says, then eight days later, Thomas 
and all the others were in the house together. And even though all the doors were locked, Jesus suddenly stood before them and he said, peace to you. You gotta love that. They're in this room all together where Jesus first appeared to all the other disciples except Thomas. The doors are all locked. You gotta love how that's still in scripture. And all of a sudden, boom, Jesus is there. It's like, oh, hey, big guy. And it's not like Jesus doesn't know what Thomas is thinking or what he said, because I mean, he's Jesus. He knows all things. And he appears and then he goes to Thomas in verse 27 and he says, put your finger here in the wounds on my hands. Here, put your hand into the wound on my side and see for yourself. Thomas, don't give in to your doubts any longer. Just believe. Don't give in to your doubts any longer. Just believe. And maybe that sounds super easy to, to say and harder to live out. But here, Thomas put all these limitations. If you remember earlier, Thomas said, I'm not going to do this unless, unless God does this, 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 and this. I will not believe. So many times in our life, we put a limitation and an expectation. We're like, God, I know you're real. I'm listening and I'm willing to follow, but you have to do this, this, and this, and this. A relationship with God is not up to you and I to put limitations on. It's not up to you and I to put expectations on and say, God, you gotta meet me here. You gotta meet me here. You gotta do it like this, this, and this. Because God will do all of those things but it'll limit yourself from everything he has for you. So stop putting a limitation on all these things because God did what Thomas asked. And here's what he said to Thomas. Don't give in to your doubts any longer, just believe. And then the word spilled out of his heart. I love that part. It's not the word spilling out of Jesus's heart. This is the word spilling out of Thomas's heart. You are my Lord and you are my God. And Jesus responded, Thomas, Now that you have seen me, you believe. Now that you see me physically, that you got to put your hands in my scars, to put your hands in my side, you believe. But there are those who have never seen me with their eyes, but have believed me in me with their hearts. And they will be blessed even more. How many of you can relate to Thomas? Life is difficult. There's seasons and moments in our faith where we doubt. Stop putting a limitation on it because I promise you God has something greater than anything you could ever limit. So I wanna take a moment. I want you to respond. There's gonna be a couple of questions on there. I want you to take a second just to think, to pause and to ask God, have I trusted you fully or am I having faith with doubt? So respond to those questions and I'll come back in just a second.
here's what I want you to understand. If you're in a moment of doubt, if you're, if you're doubting God right now, or if you have doubted God, again, that's not a terrible thing, but don't let it be a dead end. You're not alone. If you look in scripture, Mark 9, we see the disciples, there's, there's a boy in need of a miracle. He, he's possessed by demons and the disciples go and they try to perform the miracle, but they can't. And so they're frustrated. And Jesus comes and he asks what's wrong. And the dad is like, if you can do this, Jesus, if you can do this. And if you read it, Jesus is getting frustrated, not at the dad. He's getting frustrated at his disciples. And he, in fact, he calls them, he's like, how much longer do I have to be around you guys? How much, and not like in a bad way. And Jesus is like, I'm done. You guys smell bad, all this stuff. But he's asking, how much longer do I have to be around your unbelief and your doubt? If you read Mark 3 to Mark 9, God has done miracle after miracle after miracle and the disciples have seen all of it, but yet they didn't have enough faith to pray for the miracle to happen. If you go to Mark 6, a, a, another passage in scripture that breaks my heart, Jesus goes back to his hometown and there's still this excitement that follows him because again, miracles after miracles have happened. He's fed the 5,000, he's healed a woman with the issue of blood, all these different things. Jairus' um, child has been raised to life because of Jesus. And he goes back to his hometown where there's still a need, where there's still issues. And people come around and they gather and then they pause and they say, wait a second, isn't that Jesus? Isn't that Mary's son? Doesn't his family live right over there down the street? We know that guy. He's nothing special. His dad's a carpenter. He, he's been an apprentice to a carpenter all his life. He's not a Messiah. This, this can't be, that's too good to be true. And the thing that hurts in that passage is when you read it, it says that miracles still happened, but they were limited because people put a limitation and they doubted Jesus. I hope wherever you're at right now, that that has never been your story. And if it is, you can change that. Because if you wanna experience a revival in your life, and that is my prayer, that's Pastor Caleb's prayer, that's all these youth leaders watching's prayer, we want you to experience the next level that God has for you. But in order to do that, you gotta let go of the doubt and say, God, I trust you. Grab his hand, he's got a whole new world to show you. Point back to Aladdin. All right, guys, well, hopefully, you know, part one and part two have spoke to your heart. Um, listen to God, follow God, and stop doubting. Um, it's not a too good to be true thing. God has a word for you. God wants to take you to the next level. And in order to do that, you have to have the faith to take his hand and to follow him. Week three is this coming Wednesday. Pastor Caleb is bringing an amazing word. You are not gonna wanna miss that. So invite somebody right now. Text them, say, hey, you gotta check out Impact. And then jump on Instagram. Lindsay and I are gonna be going live after the service. We love you guys, we miss you. We'll see you next week for an amazing night of Impact. Love you guys.